The first thing you need to know is that tracking is using a motorized mount that rotates at the correct speed to counteract the rotation of the Earth. With proper polar alignment, based on whether you live in the northern or southern hemispheres, this tracking can help keep your stars sharp. With proper polar alignment and exposure length, you can create some amazing pictures. However, as you go up in focal length, the tracker starts losing its accuracy and that's where the next step comes in, which is guiding. Hi, Dalen here. Here at Astroscape, we go over all things astrophotography, starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there. And this is all to help you escape the day to day and image the night. If you're new here, if you like what you see as you're watching the video, please consider giving this one a like. So tracking and guiding are two different things. And I've already gone over tracking for you, so let's go over guiding and let's put this as simply as possible. When you're guiding, you use a second camera to target a star near the object that you are imaging. This camera then tells the software where the star is in the frame and says keep it here. If the star drifts at all in any direction, the camera then tells your guiding software of choice the star moved and where. The software then sends little nudge commands to the mount to correct the drift and to very slowly and subtly correct this. These commands happen very quickly and rapidly to keep the guide star in the same spot of the frame. Now guiding can help create images where the exposure times can be 10 minutes or more. However, that time limit is usually based on the hardware and its cooling capabilities to prevent overheating. But these long exposures can help pull out details in very faint objects or can help pull the faint outer areas of very bright objects. Guiding is also needed for dithering, which is intentionally moving that star a few pixels at a time to help calibration frames and your stacking software reduce noise and any other problems with the cameras. Now, like I said earlier, there is some guiding software that helps control things, and there are really two major options. There's PHD2 and there's the ASI Air. Now, there are other guiding programs out there other than those two that I just mentioned. However, quite a few of them actually seem like they're not being updated anymore for either Windows or Mac. Moving into the hardware side of things, keep this one in mind if you still haven't purchased anything yet. All mounts have the capability to track, but some have the capability to do both. Where this limitation is, is just between sky trackers and the full-on mounts. Star trackers, such as the Skywatcher Star Adventure and the iOptron Sky Guider, only have the ability to guide for right ascension. They do not have declination tracking. However, most bigger mounts like the HEQ5 and on up do have full guiding capabilities. But smaller trackers like the Move Shoot Move and the Vixen Polari don't have any guiding capabilities at all. So there are times when you only need to track and there are times when you do need to guide. So an example of when only to track is if you're just doing a Milky Way shot. Maybe you just wanna get some extra exposure so you just put it on the tracker, maybe dial the knob down to half speed so that way you get sharp ground and sharp stars. Another good time for doing only tracking is if you're doing a night sky time lapse where you want to pan across the frame. All right, and if you really want to test your skills with great polar alignment and a 61 millimeter telescope, I know you can get at least a minute of exposure time if everything is dead on. If your polar alignment is dead on for something, say 135 millimeters, you can actually squeeze up to about two minutes. But other than that, I would recommend guiding. If, if you're higher in focal lengths or you want to do longer exposures, I would recommend at least getting a mount that can do right ascension guiding, like a Star Adventure or Sky Guider. Alright, so I do have a question for you. If you already have a guiding setup, what is it? If you don't already have a guiding setup, what are you looking at getting? If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe think about subscribing. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.